hard-working farmers like Peter suffer. And then, when there's a food shortage a few years down the line, we send more wheat as food aid. Kenyans are good at farming, both crops and livestock. They don't need aid, they need the chance to compete. When rich countries drop their protectionism, profits can soar. Yet, the EU is often unwilling to open its doors to foreign competition. With tariffs, we keep their goods out. With subsidies, we destroy their markets here. We spend half of the entire EU budget on our farmers, the common agricultural policy. We spend so much on farming that each of our 20 million cows could fly around the world once every year. How can Kenyan dairy or bee farmers possibly compete with that? But if we allowed Kenya to export them, and if Kenya did away with its restrictions and red tape, Kenya could seriously compete with us. It's not that we in the West are trying to trick poor countries into global capitalism. The problem is we are shutting them out from it. The two areas where the poorest countries could compete most strongly and so become rich are farming and textiles. But these are precisely the goods in which rich countries refuse to trade freely. The European Union, for example, has 10,794 tariffs, quotas and subsidies to protect our farmers and manufacturers. Imagine the amount of bureaucracy dealing with all that paperwork. Once upon a time, we escaped poverty because we globalized. We produced and traded freely. Now that we are rich, we are withholding those same opportunities from poor countries. If we dropped our subsidies and tariffs, we could massively reduce poverty in Africa. The United Nations has calculated that if we did this, developing countries could make as much as 450 billion pounds a year from exports. That's 14 times more than they receive in aid today. Our world isn't at all too globalized. In fact, it has far too little globalization. Wherever the doors have been opened, we have seen amazing results. Therefore, one of the worst enemies of the poor today is the anti-globalization movement. They are encouraging the EU and the US to have more, not less restrictions. These people are wrong and dangerous. At the present time, the world's wealthiest countries are trying to agree to reduce protectionism. If this happens, it'll make it much easier for poor countries to trade their way to prosperity. But the anti-globalization protesters, however well-intentioned, have given our governments an excuse to back away from these reforms. So today, we all face a choice. Do we lobby our governments against globalization? Or do we campaign against the barriers to globalization that still exist? World poverty is not inevitable. Global capitalism can end that poverty. It has done so wherever it's been given a chance. In Europe, North America, East Asia. The issue at stake in the globalization debate is whether the world's excluded are going to get that same chance.